All right, so I'm going to continue from where we left off last time in analyzing the envelope detector circuit. So we saw that when the input voltage is less than the output voltage, the diode is reverse biased, and due to discharging of the capacitor, the output voltage will decrease exponentially with time constant RC until it reaches the input voltage level. Once the input voltage becomes greater than the output voltage, the diode becomes forward biased, and due to charging of the capacitor, the output voltage will increase with time constant ID times C and will continue to do so until the input voltage becomes back less than the output voltage. Now keep in mind that for the majority of each cycle of oscillation in the carrier, the diode will be reverse biased. And so I'm going to look at two cases, when X of T is increasing and when X of T is decreasing. So case one is when the modulating signal X of T is increasing. So for the majority of the carrier period, the diode will still be reverse biased. Only for a small fraction of the carrier period, the diode will be forward biased. And during this small time interval where the diode is forward biased, the output voltage will increase to be equal to the envelope, and this is due to charging of the capacitor. So V out of T will increase until it reaches the envelope. Now when X of T is increasing, once the diode is forward biased, we want it to reach the envelope as quick as possible. This will only happen if the time constant ID times C of the envelope detector circuit is much shorter than the period of the carrier. So we need that IDC is much less than the period of the carrier, which is 2 pi over omega c, where omega c is the carrier frequency in radians per second. So this way, relative to the period of the carrier, the output voltage will quickly increase until it reaches the envelope. Now let's look at what happens when x of t is increasing, but the diode is still reverse biased. So this here was for the small fraction of the carrier period where the diode is forward biased. Let's look at what happens when X of T is increasing but the diode is reverse biased. Obviously since the diode is reverse biased there's no way that the output voltage could still increase to continue following the envelope so ideally what we want is that the output voltage pretty much stays the same. Now as we saw earlier when the PN junction diode is reverse biased, the capacitor discharges through the resistor with time constant RC, and the output voltage decreases. Therefore, in order for the voltage to stay roughly constant until the next instant where it becomes forward biased, we want the time constant RC to be much longer than the period of the carrier. So we want that RC is much greater than the period of the carrier, which is 2 pi over omega C. Know that this ID and this I are not the same resistance. ID is the very small diode resistance, which is on the order of a few hundred ohms. This I is generally a very large resistor in parallel with a capacitor, and in this lab we'll use one mega ohm. So these are two different resistances. Now case two is when the modulating signal X of T is decreasing. So generally the output voltage will follow the envelope and not to variations in the carrier, assuming that the time constant RC of the envelope detector circuit when the diode is reverse biased is much larger than the period of the carrier. That's this assumption here. Now, it turns out that we also need the time constant RC to be fast compared to the rate at which the envelope X of T changes itself. And here's why. Assume that our capacitor voltage is at this point in time. So if the time constant RC is close to the period of X of T, then at some point, even when the carrier is reaching its peaks, that's not enough to make the diode forward biased. And so you'll get this very slow exponential decay every time X of T is decreasing. So once it gets to this point here, now even these peaks in the carrier won't be enough to forward bias the diode, and so you'll just get this very slow exponential decay due to the discharging of the RC circuit. 
On the other hand, if the time constant RC is much smaller than the period of x of t, then yes, you, you'll have more sharper up and down behavior when x of t is increasing, because you, so you'll have something like this, so more sharper up and down behavior. But you won't have that very slow exponential decay when x of t is decreasing. First of all, it won't even get to the point where the peaks of the carrier aren't large enough to forward bias the diode for a while. And even when it does, because the time constant RC is much smaller than the period of X of T, the output voltage will decay at a reasonably fast rate and it will still appear as if the output voltage is following the envelope. Now let's see if we can use our analysis for the two cases of X of T increasing and decreasing and see if we can trace out the envelope like the envelope detector would. So let's assume that our, this is, our capacitor voltage is at this point in time. X of t is beginning to increase, and so at this point in time, the diode will become reverse biased, and so you'll have discharging through the resistor until once the input voltage reaches this level, then the output voltage will quickly increase to reach the envelope. And then again, now once the input voltage reaches this level, it will quickly increase back up to follow the envelope, and so on. Now once x of t begins to decrease, then you'll have this IC exponential decrease. And now once these peaks aren't large enough to forward bias the diode, then you'll get an RC discharge to the capacitor until now once X of T is back increasing then you'll get back that sort of up and down behavior due to the sharp time constant RC of the envelope detector circuit when the diode is reverse biased. Now very clearly there's an issue here. The time constant RC when the diode is reverse biased is too small which is why we get this sharp up and down behavior in between the peaks but at the same time we can't make it larger since otherwise when x of t is decreasing we won't be tracing the envelope anymore we'll just get this slow exponential decay we'll end up with something like this both of these criterion are necessary in order for the envelope detector to reasonably trace the envelope and it turns out that the only solution to this sharp up and down behavior is by increasing the carrier frequency so suppose that we double the carrier frequency and keep the time constant RC the same. Now, RC is still much smaller than the, than the period of X of T, but since T, the period of the carrier, equals 2 pi over omega C, by doubling omega C, the period of the carrier gets reduced by half. So now the time constant RC is much larger relative to the carrier period compared with the previous case, so the envelope detector will follow the envelope much closer. So very clearly, there are four conditions that have to be met in order for successful operation of the envelope detector. First of all, x of t, our modulating signal, has to be greater than or equal to zero. Because remember, the output of an ideal envelope detector system is an absolute value of x of t, not x of t. So we want x of t to be greater than or equal to zero, so that absolute value of x of t equals x of t. Second, which is what we just saw, omega m has to be much less than omega c. In other words, the carrier has to change much, much faster than the envelope does. Third, we need Rd times C to be much, much less than 2 pi over omega C. So the time constant of the envelope detector when the diode is forward biased is much shorter than the period of the carrier, so that once the diode becomes forward biased, the output voltage will quickly increase to follow the envelope. Lastly, we need that 2 pi over omega C is much less than IC, which is also much less than 2 pi over omega m, 
and omega m is the frequency of our modulating signal x of t. So in other words, we need that the time constant of the envelope detector circuit, when the diode is reverse biased, needs to be much larger than the period of the carrier, so that we don't get this abrupt up and down behavior, but also much faster than the rate at which the envelope changes, so that when x of t is decreasing, our envelope detector can still reasonably follow the envelope, and we don't get some slow exponential decay like this. Alright, this is it for the introductory portion of the lab, and in the next video, we will begin the in-lab portion, which is actually building our envelope detector circuit.